，一天不吃，让我们大家前进，反抗到底。But the Chinese knew that the will to resist was not by itself enough. They knew that China must develop the power to resist also. And this cannot be created in an instant. So they too made a plan. And it was this. They would slowly yield territory, piece by piece, while they developed the power and built the weapons to rid the land of its invaders. The industrial strength of China must be moved to the west, beyond the mountains beyond the railroad lines, beyond the lines of communication. There, safe from enemy attacks, they might produce the rifles and guns that China so tragically needed. Thus, China would trade space for time. Space for time, blow up the roads. Space for time, scorch the earth. Space for time, blow up the factory building. Leave nothing for the invaders. And then the people rose and moved, riding, walking, crawling. million of them, spontaneously driven by an epic impulse, rose and made their way westward. The earth teeming with them, moving westward on a trek that stretched through 2,000 miles of roadless wilderness. Thus the world witnessed one of the most amazing spectacles in human history, the greatest mass migration ever recorded. Whatever could be of use and could be moved, the Chinese took with them on a Homeric journey. Their libraries, their schools, their hospitals, all dismantled and carted away. The machinery from over a thousand factories, weighing over 300 million pounds, was moved away in trucks and ox carts and on their backs. 2,000 miles away, 2,000 miles west, Wherever they could, they gathered along the few remaining railroads, waiting, hoping for some chance to ride part of the way toward their westward goal. And when they had packed the last train with the last ounce of humanity and machinery, the tracks themselves were taken up, rail by rail, tie by tie, to be transported westward, to leave nothing for the enemy. pointing westward was heavy laden. Every sampan, every barge was pressed into service, weighted down to the water's edge with the precious tools for new China. Nothing could stop them, not even the rivers that narrowed into mountain gorges. Westward with their loads of machinery more precious than gold.
measured by the mile, by feet, by inches. The trail they broke was moistened every step of the way by their sweat. Where there were no trains, no boats, no ox carts, there were still willing hands and willing feet and straining backs. 30 million people moving westward, westward from the invader, westward from slavery and death, westward to freedom. mountain lands of the west, ancient cities sprang into fresh and modern life. Chief of them all was the new capital of free China, Chongqing. Here on the cliffs high above the Yangtze River, the Chinese had re-established their government. They knew, however, that the people of the city would not be safe from Jap air raids. The memories of Shanghai were fresh in their minds. And in the sandstone cliff on which the city is built, Thousands of workmen rushed the construction of enormous caves as shelters for the people and for the pitifully few machines more important than life. <laughs> <laughs> 